Welcome to Coach's Corner. This is something that we have done at our live events and our live streams and something that we have started bringing to our five-day events, something that everyone usually loves. My name is Mikey the Chief Operating Officer and Director of Marketing. I'm also your host for this week during Bob Proctor's Five Days to a Paradigm Shift. And I am thrilled to one of our longtime GI coaches and success advisors, Bill Banta. How are you doing? Hey, thanks, Mikey. It's always so good to be with you. I love Coaches Corners. Uh, you do such an amazing job at bringing out all this knowledge. So it's great to be with you. Thank you, Bill. And I'm so excited to have you with us. Today's lesson was so good. Bob really went into paradigms. I don't think you could hear about paradigms enough, even in the beginning, but even now I still learn so much. I was taking notes today when Bob was talking about paradigms. There's just so much valuable content and it truly is like the thing you have to understand to create a paradigm shift, of course, is paradigms. So can you simplify paradigms and what would you reiterate? Maybe people missed this morning's lesson. In a nutshell, what is a paradigm? Yeah, and first of all, Mikey, I think it's very important that all week those who are with us don't under—I mean, don't don't underestimate the simplicity of what Bob's teaching. It is so critical because it's so simple, yet it's so simple not to understand. And so I think it's so valuable because you know, in Bob's opening statement today, I believe he said the paradigm is—and I wrote it down here—said the paradigm the paradigm stops us from living the life that we want. And I just always look at paradigm as the, the wolf on the doorstep, you know, the things that just won't let you quite get out the door and uh, go seek freedom. And, and for some reason, and I'm speaking for myself, in different areas of my life, I tend to just feed the wolf. I just keep feeding it, feeding it, instead of starving it and letting it run away to another place. Um, and I think paradigms are those multitude of habits that are, some of them, you know, they're not even our own, right? They were just habitual and family. I was at a recent family party and I sat back and watched and I have a fairly large family, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, and I was watching and I could see this generational programming all the way through down to me and moving into my kids. I could see it. And I thought that was so amazing to realize that a lot of the things in our lives to our viewers, to you, to I, to Bob, they're things that, that, that have been given to us generationally. Are they, are, they, are they wrong? Well, it just depends on where you're going. You know, if, if, that, if that programming or that wiring is not in harmony with helping you create freedom, then you have to do something about it. So if it's stopping you, I think we need to, I think we need to stop underestimating the power of it and start giving ourselves the understanding and the teachings. I mean, it's so, it's so key. Bob talks about the, the key to understanding or the key to freedom is understanding. And, and when we studied this, 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 this whole process that Bob's going to take each one of us through this week, we will gain understanding. And that's the thing that will help us to understand the paradigm and how to eliminate that gap between where we are and where we want to be. I love that. I love that you said the wolf at the door. That's so good. And one thing that I love about what Bob teaches and what we're all about here at PGI is we are about teaching things that create long-term results, not just motivation where you get a, you get excited about something and you get started on something and then it just fades away. So creating a paradigm shift really is about creating those long-term results, that long-term change. Do you want to talk about that and the differences? Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think motivation is very shallow. I mean, each one of us generally shower every day, right? Because that's just what we have to do to stay healthy and clean, right? And motivation's the same way. I mean, nobody wants to have to wake up and regenerate and, and recharge every single day. This It's just, we, it should become a natural part of who we are. I think it was Earl Nightingale said that success was the natural order of things. And I'm really, I really stand by that, that it's not that big of a secret to understand how to succeed. We just have to develop a formula. And I've been taught by some incredible mentors over my years and, and all the years I've spent with Bob and Arash and all these other great people is that there's a formula to rewire and change that paradigm so that you have long-term consistency rather than these ups and downs. Um, it's so funny because I was on a call today with a client and he, he, he was telling me, and this man's very successful, and he was telling me how last week he had this really low week. And he said, teach me how to stop having low weeks. And I shared with him what Bob taught me years ago, and I showed him a graph, and I still have it. Bob had me draw a line on the piece of paper that was a squiggly line. And he said, see how the highs are highs and the lows are lows. And he said, when you can learn 
to create short lows and short highs and you just become consistent in the way you think through the way you feel, he said, you'll have a much happier and healthier life. And that's our goal this week is to help every single soul on here develop a more happy, peaceful, balanced life that they don't have to have those high highs and those low lows. And, and the paradigm will always take us to the high highs and the low lows unless we learn to be in control. I love that. So good. You actually have a really inspiring story. You've been studying Bob since the 90s, which seems like forever ago right now. But tell us a little bit about your story, just because I know that everyone who hasn't had a chance to meet you would love to hear it. Well, I think like uh, uh, there's a lot of people out there that would re that would resonate with this. I was telling I was telling you earlier that I have a shelf in a storage room that still has cassette tapes. I mean, this is pre-internet, right? This is when Bob had a coaching program that we would call in on an 800 number. <laughs> and we would listen to these 800 number calls. And, um, <laughs> and I think it's hilarious because um, I'm just a, I'm a regular guy from a small community. And um, I grew up in a very lower middle-class family where basically when, our, when we were born into this family, you were born with a shovel. And it was like, as soon as you graduated high school, that was your gift. Take that shovel that you were born with and just go to work. And historically, uh, I think I only have my two oldest children and a couple of other cousins that have ever graduated from university in our family still today. So it's a very work-oriented uh, paradigm growing up in my home. And, and we met Bob in the early 90s at a training seminar that we were invited to. And Bob promoted his book, You Were Born Rich. And he, and he stood on that stage and he said, you are born rich. And I felt like I was the only person in that conference center. And from that point on, I wanted to know what he meant and what does it mean that I'm born rich? And then I just started to discover through what Bob was teaching that I truly do have self-worth, that I really am a valuable person. And that uh, as Bob would say, we are God's highest form, form of, of, of creation I knew at that spot in the, in the 90s, my, Mikey, that I literally was that person. And so, you know, I have just this incredible journey of success and some failure all the way through the 90s and into the 2000s. But, um, you know, luckily, um, my sweet wife was the one that pushed me in 2010 to come back around this way. And now, as a consequence, I'm here and I'm working with you and with Bob and Arash and people all over the world. And I don't think that if it wouldn't have been for that foundation of those early days and that original You Were Born Rich seminar that I went to, um, or when Bob was speaking about it, that I truly could be here today because, I, again, my story goes back to the majority of my family today, and they're great people, but they still operate the same way they did 26 years ago when I started this, this, this training. And so it's proof to me that every soul on this call today who will watch all week, who will study, if I can do it, they can do it, right? It's, it's, it's just a step-by-step -step process and that, that opportunity for us to develop ourselves, it's already inside of us. We all know more than we think we do. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm always so impressed by your consistency and your commitment. I mean, that's the 30 year period, we're talking almost 30 years that you've been studying and improving yourself and you've never given up. So I'm very impressed with that. Thank you for sharing your what I'd love to know is we have, um, I think, 35,000 people registered for this training. I think there's 25,000 about people in the Facebook group, which is just incredible. We're so excited to be reaching this many people with this great free training that we're doing. But I don't want people to come to this training and enjoy the information, but not make any changes to their life. And so what I want to hear from you is what does every person on this call need to do to actually make lasting change, to implement this material and to look back a year from today and think, wow, I created a paradigm shift. I'm in a completely different position. Well, I think the first thing that everybody has to do starting today, okay, you have to doubt your doubts. Don't come, don't come back the rest of the week with any doubt in your mind that says, well, what if I don't? Or what if this, just, just for the rest of this week, let that go. If you want to do that next week, fine, but don't do it this week, right? Just give us that chance to help you understand as good as Bob is and as good as the assignments that Arash is sharing with you, that there's absolutely no reason why you cannot create a shift this week. And it may not be apparent in the first couple of days, but you will see it by Friday. I know that for sure. I know that you'll make decisions of life altering opportunities in the next few days that will literally put you on a path 
to directly change your life. You talked about my persistency. Well, if I was looking at myself over almost 30 years, I could be discouraged sometimes and think, well, I'm not where I need to be. But I've been taught not to think that way. I know for a fact where I'm going. And I know for a fact that even myself as a student this week, that if I will just do the simple exercises that is being laid out in front of us and, and just do them to a T with 100% faith. I mean, what is it? 45 minutes with Bob, about 15 minutes with Arash, a couple of minutes here and there with you and, a, and people like me. So you might spend 10 hours this week. If you will make these 10 hours count and just do the work and just, just absolutely submit to the process and just know that this is going to be a new winning formula for each one of you. There's no question in my mind based on my own experience, not anybody else's, but my own of the things that will change for you. And when you look back in a year from now, I think Bob said it this morning, if I remember right, he said, you'll, see, you'll need a telescope. I know that's true because I see it. And I even see it in my children, Mikey. I see my children, my adult children who are now in their careers, who are dominating things that just by example, just by being raised in this environment for 27, 28 years have changed. So for the week, just make it simple, accept the idea, throw out the doubt, you know more than you think you do, and just do it. And when, like, like Arash's whole assignment take, just do it. Like even if you've done it a hundred times before, do it again. Yeah. Bill, I know you have to feel this way since you've been studying a lot longer than I have. I've only been studying 12 years. And when I look back, it seems like a different lifetime. That's not even that long ago, but the change has been so much. And I'm like, that seems like it wasn't even this same life time. So it think quickly things can change and how drastically things can change. Now, one question that I'm very excited to hear your answer, because I actually don't know the answer, and I'm planning on asking all the coaches this week this, is what is the one most valuable lesson you've learned from Bob over the years? Wow, that's, that's a really good question. They, they'll get a better chance to prepare, so I guess I get to go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually think a number of things, but one of the biggest things for me is just to let me be me. Every single one of us have that person inside. All of us do. I cannot be Bob. Bob cannot be me, right? I can't be you. You can't be me, nor do we ever want to be. Uh, I think that Mikey, the, the biggest, the biggest thing I've learned, and I don't know where I heard him say this, um, but it doesn't matter. My thumbprints are unique to me. Nobody in this world will ever have them, nor will they ever, will they have ever in the past. It's me. And I was created to be who I'm supposed to be. And so I think the biggest lesson I am learning, and still learning, by the way, I mean, really still learning to accept this is just to be who I am. And then I'll let that, let that person out of that cage that life and paradigms and conditioning and generational, all these things has kind of put that cage around me. The fact is the door's not locked. It's not locked. It's just a matter of pushing that door open. And so I think the biggest lesson is, is just to be me. And as I develop confidence through experience by being me, it's interesting how fast things change. And you talk about a lifetime ago, I was thinking just in the time I've been with you guys here, it's been a lifetime and it's, and it's just been that short period of time. And so I can only imagine when we're talking in two years from now, where we'll be because it's so progressive and going back to what Earl Nightingale said and I'll, and I'll, and I can stop it there, but is that it's the natural order of things. We are built for this. We're not built to fail. We will fail. We'll fall. And I've learned to be more confident in my mistakes. And I'll tell you the biggest thing I've learned in that is that I'm no longer critical of me. I'm just me. And I'm building this model of me. That's, that's absolutely dynamic. And it's just a matter of putting the puzzle together. Bill, I love that. I'm so glad you shared that. You know, today on Bob's lesson, he shared that that was one of the most valuable lessons he learned from Ray Stanford right from the very beginning as Ray told him, you are a unique individual. There's no one else in this world like you and the world would not be the same if you were not here. I love that. And we're actually going to get really into self-image and understanding value on Wednesday. It's going to be a lesson nobody wants to miss. Um, we're going to do self-image and attitude on Wednesday. So there's a little preview that I wasn't going to give, but going to be so, so good. And tomorrow is all about goals. Again, very good. Do not miss a live session. They're going to be very good. And on Friday, we're doing a full hour Q and A with Bob every day this week. We plan on going live for coaches corner at this time. We hope that you will just Bill. Thank you so much for all the valuable lessons you've shared and I'll see you next time.
Absolutely, Mikey. Take care, everyone.